What's up, guys? Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. Jesse Laco, AthleteX.com. Could be Jesse's favorite video. We're going to revisit at least one of his favorite topics here. We're talking today about masturbation. Oh, you mean going on a date with Pamela Henderson? Like I said, his favorite topic. Guys, we actually talked about this previously on this channel, and I would say it was a, a hit. I would say a big hit. So let's revisit the topic, though, because there is some relatively new research out that would potentially guide your decision if you indulge on not just whether you should or shouldn't, but maybe when you should or shouldn't, if you want to see the best gains from your workouts. Oh, so you mean that just before bed is not the only time to be doing it? Well, let's talk about that, because a lot of the focus has always been around testosterone and whether or not masturbation causes a significant release of testosterone that leads to more or less gains in muscle from your workouts. Okay. And we pretty much debunked all that and said that it's an insignificant amount of testosterone that is released and for too short a period of time to actually create any kind of significant impact on its own. Right, it's pretty negligible. Right. But what we were talking about though was there is a definitive relaxation that happens from the release of an orgasm at the time that you have an orgasm from masturbation that could lead to, what are you laughing about? You're smiling over here Can't constantly. Confirm. <laughs> so, so <laughs> we're really going to learn too much about him in this video. That leads to a level of relaxation that if done by my recommendation in the last video, close to the time that you sleep, then you can actually get more restful sleep and improve your overall muscle recovery. And anything you're going to do as a natural that can improve your muscle recovery is going to lead to more muscle gains, I believe, in the long run. So no wonder my gains have been so great since that video <laughs> came out. Yes, because if you institute a habit and a habit is done consistently, especially that improved sleep is going to pay big dividends. However, there's a new area of focus that's been under the microscope of late, and it's the impact of masturbation to orgasm on cannabinoid release. They're actually made in your body. There's an endocannabinoid called 2-AG, which is 2-arachidinyl glycerol. And when it binds to that CB2 receptor, you get some type of effect. Okay. The effect that you get from the binding of 2-AG there is two pretty significant things. Number one is a blunting to pain. In other words, an increased threshold to pain or discomfort. Okay. The second thing that you get is sort of an overall elevation of mood or feeling of calmness or relaxation and um, tranquility, okay. right, which is probably what you're talking about, yeah. right, with, that you've experienced yes. firsthand. <laughs> now, if you are going to hit the gym, could this be a new mechanism of a pre-workout? Could this be your new favorite pre-workout, Jesse? It could be my very favorite <laughs> pre-workout. Does that mean I could also be doing two days now? Once before the workout and then once before bed? Possibly, possibly, but here's why you want to be very specific about its use. Depends on how you train. Okay. We talk about three main methods of hypertrophy. There's a method through overall strength training, progressive overload and tension, right? Yep. We talk about the use of heavy eccentric overload, mm -hmm. which would be taking some type of load but slowing down the eccentric to cause muscle damage in which we can improve the repair. And then we have the third mechanism, which is a metabolic overload, which is usually using lighter weights, training to and through failure, really trying to overcome the most significant thing that's limiting you in that type of training, which is the pain and discomfort that you feel. The burn. The burn. Yeah. Being able to resist that burn for longer. If you can do that, then you can probably figure out a way to actually train harder and longer. Ha! <laughs> harder and longer. I, I, come, I come with my own, there you go. My own puns. Yeah, come now, with your own puns. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that one. <laughs> now listen, if you're training like you were recently for yeah. strength yeah. and setting a PR like you were in your intro. <laughs> I would not recommend engaging prior to a workout. So you don't think I should tame this one-eyed sea monster beforehand? <sighs> no. So because what I think it could potentially happen is that you're getting maybe a little bit too much of that sedation okay. where we know that the main thing that you're going to respond to prior to a big lift is the excitement, the yeah. neuro excitement. That's why smelling salts exist to get you going. That's why heavy metal exists, or at least one of the reasons why, <laughs> to get you going, get you excited. Plus, we don't really in engage in any type of discomfort when we're trying to train for strength. Right. It's just whether you can lift it or you can't. It's not the same discomfort that we get from eccentric training and or metabolic we're training. We're going through the burn and trying to get right. force out an extra rep or whatever like that. But if your training is focused more right now on eccentric overload, hypertrophy, metabolic overload, which a lot of people it is, it's not yeah. their focus isn't just on strength, 
then I would say there are some potential benefits here because the blunting effect of the, the discomfort, the feeling of discomfort and pain, could allow you to train, as I said, harder and longer, a few more reps, you're laughing again, a few more repetitions in every set, which could take you not just to that point of failure, but through that point of failure that we know has the capacity to push you. We talked about in our 100 workout series, being able to train past that point of failure yeah. with more intensity. This could do it just by having the sort of blunted effect to, I just said blunted too, <laughs> blunted effect to that level of discomfort that you're feeling. Yep. And that sort of improved mood and relaxation, it almost sort of puts you in that zone. This type of training, especially metabolic, doesn't really require a whole hell of a lot of focus. It just requires that you can keep grinding and yep. pushing through that point. So if that type of training, that's the major part of what you're doing right now, listen, I'm gonna kinda go out on a limb here and say you can do this as, as a adjunct to your pre-workout, maybe not a replacement for, uh, and certainly I still have the recommendation that prior to bed, anything that improves relaxation and improves sleep is going to be beneficial, I think, for a natural lifter in the long term. So it's a good idea to help Mr. Kleenex put his kids through college. Guys, I got nothing else to say about this. <laughs> Hope you found the video helpful. Oh, I did. All right, guys, see you soon. Oh!